Yo, what's good YouTube? Welcome to lesson 41. Today we're going to learn how to use a RESTful API to talk to a server and request some data. So there are a lot of free APIs available out there and for this lesson we will be using a Pokemon API. So first let's go to pokeapi.co and this is a great free API to get Pokemon data. So on this site, it gives us a quick example. So let's try it out. So first we have the host, which is pokeapi.co. Then we want to hit the endpoint api slash v2, which is just the second version of the API. And then for this example, we want to get the resource ditto from the resource Pokemon. And once we click submit, we'll see the data come back from the API. And the data is just basically in JSON format, which has key value pairs. And we can also open this link directly in our browser. And here we have Pokemon slash ditto. And as you can see, there's a lot of data. And that's basically how APIs work. And as programmers, our job is to make a request to these APIs so that we can get data and use it in our application. So there are a lot of different ways to request data. And my favorite way is using a fetch request. It's super easy to use. So that's what we'll be using in today's lesson. So to request data in JavaScript, all we have to do is type fetch and then we pass the endpoint that we want to request as a string parameter. Since we are talking to a server, we will have to wait for it to get us a response. And by using a fetch request, we will be doing this asynchronously so that we don't block the main thread. So now let's add a console.log to see what the fetch request returns. And for some reason, we didn't get back JSON, but instead we got this promise object. A promise is very similar to real life. We make them all the time and we're usually guaranteeing that we will do something in the future. There are two outcomes for a promise. One being that the promise is kept and the second is that the promise is not kept. So in JavaScript, a promise basically either gets resolved or rejected. So when we get back data from a server, the promise is basically resolved. And when the request fails, which is basically an error, the promise is basically rejected. So now let's go back to our code and let's remove the console.log. And to handle the resolve state of a promise, all we have to do is type dot then and open the parenthesis. And inside the parenthesis, we can do the shorthand function and pass it the parameter response. And now let's console log the response to see what we get back. In order to see the response in detail, we need to open the console debugger. Now go to the console tab and there's a lot of gibberish from Replit, but let's find the response object. And once you find it, feel free to expand it. And here you can see there's a lot of data. For example, there's headers, there's the status, and etc. However, inside this response, there's no JSON at all. And to get the JSON, we have to call the function .json on the response object. And we have to return response.json because the .json function returns another promise. And the cool thing about promises is that it can keep returning promises and we can handle each promise with another dot then statement. And for this then statement, we can use the parameter JSON because we expect to get a JSON back from response.json. And now let's use console.log to see what this JSON will give us. And boom, just like that, we got the JSON data for ditto. So to summarize, we passed a URL to the fetch statement which returned a promise object. Then we use a then statement to convert the response into a JSON object. And finally, we use another then statement to get the finalized JSON object. And because we're always returning a promise object, we can keep adding more dot then statements. And this is known as chaining, where we are continuing the same statement without creating new variables for each one. And finally, we can add a dot catch statement to handle the rejected state of the promise. And the beautiful thing about chaining is if any of these promises fail, we only need one catch statement to handle all the failures. Cool. So now I'm going to speed up the video and do some DOM manipulation to show you how we could use JSON data in our application. For this example, we're going to show the weight of ditto. And there you have it. Ditto weighs 40 kilograms. Cool. And that's basically how you use an API to query data. Feel free to try this out and let me know what API you use in the comments below. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to build a simple Pokédex app. So make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson.